You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo, from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts, Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian from OptionPit.com, Andrew the Rock Lobster, Joe Benazzi from from OptionPit.com and Henry the Flowmaster Schwartz from SIBO. The Option Block is brought to you by SIBO. When it comes to trading volatility, trust SIBO, the creator of the VIX Index, for in-depth and relevant information. SIBO's tools and services gives you up-to-date trade insights, analysis, and positions of VIX options and futures. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cboe.com com slash VIX today to learn more. The views expressed herein are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of CBOE Global Markets Incorporated or any of its subsidiaries, collectively CBOE. The information provided is for general education and information purposes only. There are important risks associated with transacting in any of the CBOE products or any of the digital assets discussed here. Before engaging in any transactions in those products or digital assets, it is important for market participants to carefully review the disclosures and disclaimers contained at www.cboe.com slash us underscore disclaimers these products and digital assets are complex and are suitable only for sophisticated market participants these products involve the risk of loss which can be substantial and depending on the type of product can exceed the amount of money deposited in establishing the position market participants should put at risk only funds they can afford to lose without affecting their lifestyle and now get ready to hit the option block All right, everybody. That music means we are back once again. It is Thursday. It is noon central. It is 1 p.m. Eastern. You know what's going on in these crazy markets. Well, you know what? That's what we're here for. Let's find out together. It is time for the option block, what the cool kids call the old OB. My name, of course, Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as from the ever scintillating, at least we tend to think so around these parts. And hey, we're not biased at all. Options Insider Radio Network. Manny, if you like what you hear, this show, anything else on the network or our app, throw some stars, some likes, wherever platform you're listening on, whatever it allows you to do. It does help new people continue to discover the content. And of course, you want to go above and beyond. You want to join us live on this show, everything else we do. You want to get 200 plus hours of exclusive content just, just waiting for you. The second you hit that button, the deluge just hits you in the face. <laughs> so be prepared when you hit that button. A lot of great exclusive content coming at you. More every week, listeners, including a lot of early stuff coming at you, folks, before it hits the rest of the network. So a lot of great content to be found over there. The options, insider.com slash pro. And because we like you and because my staff is determined to bankrupt me, they want to also send you folks pro trading crates. So we give those away all the time to the options insider.com slash pros. Don't tell the rock lobster. He takes a lot of umbrage that you folks get all those cool, as he calls them, the good goodies, and he does not. But hey, let's not, not tell him and pretend it doesn't happen. The options insider.com slash pro. Speaking of the aforementioned folks, let's see who's joining us on the program today. Uh, the uncleist of Mike's on assignment today. 
So no Uncle Mikeage. No, I think he just passed out from the effervescence of this market he just couldn't take it anymore (laughs) the perma bull that he is he just he had the he got hot he got the hot and bothered and he just couldn't take it anymore he had to go fan himself Uh, so no uncle mike today of course you can find his nuggets his pearls of wisdom at mike tusa on twitter or just stcharleswealth.com is the place to go to learn more about him but we are joined by the rockingest of lobsters mr andrew Gibanazzi from optionpit.com remember whatever you do do not mention the pro trading crates around him. Mr. Rock Lobster, welcome back to the program. Uh, pay no attention to that pro trading crate behind the corner, sir. I have learned to just block it out. That's where I am right now. I just, I just block it out, and, uh, and it's okay. And, I, and I've learned to live with it. Just let the pain, just sweep the pain under the rug, you know, with everything else. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's a good way, good way to live life. I watched that Arnold Schwarzenegger documentary, so that's making the rounds on Netflix now. And he doesn't seem like a very big on introspection guy either. He's like, just keep moving forward. Pay no attention to those feelings. Just keep moving forward. That's his, that's his motto for life. It seems like it worked out career-wise for him. Personally, maybe not so much, but intriguing one. Check it out if you haven't. It's got me back in, uh, in an Arnold mood. I've been kind of binging some. Some 80s Arnold films. Checked out Predator last night again for the first time. Showed it to my kid for the first time in I don't know how many years since I've watched that movie. A seminal 80s action film, if ever there was one. Speaking of seminal, he is the seminal flow master himself, Mr. Henry Schwartz from SIBO. Mr. Flowmaster, welcome back to the show, sir. And when was the last time you saw the seminal film known as Predator, sir? You know, I worked at a video store in high school, and probably that's about when it came out. Um, I don't know if I've watched it since then, unless I'm thinking of Rambo, around the same time, I think. I don't think I've seen Rambo in even longer. Now I need to add the Stallone oeuvre <laughs> to my 80s action list. As well. I have a lot of 80s films to binge, I think, in the coming weeks and months. And we have a lot of trading to talk about, so let's get to it, listeners. A little bit of the old trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for The Trading Block. All right, everybody. Let's get out there. Let's see what's trading, what's lighting up our screens. What's got Uncle Mike so hot and bothered out there today? And it's just another day of irrational exuberance, effervescence, just lots of green. Call it what you will on the screen out there today. Market really just just shrugging off Powell and company. (laughs) <laughs> and saying, you know what? We thought maybe they were going to uh, not hike for a while. Powell trying to be a little bit more hawkish yesterday, even though it's kind of a bit of a mixed bag from him and his company. Market just shrugging it all off. Rally home mode. Back up north, listeners. North of 4,400. We are 300 points higher in the S&P than we were just a few weeks. I mean, we were south of 4,100 not too long ago. It seemed like we were locked around that 4,100 level forever. I mean, that was just, we were glued there. <laughs> And now here we are, 300 handles higher in the S&P. A crazy town. And a lot of that coming again today. 30-plus handles on the board again today. About three-quarters of a percent to the upside for the S&P. The Dow up a little over 1%. And a rear day, the tech-heavy NASDAQ. You know, the big tech names, they can't carry the market every day. Today, taking a bit of a break, only a half a percent to the upside (laughs) for the tech-heavy NASDAQ today. So you have a little bit of an inverse of the usual market that we see, listeners, uh, with the NASDAQ being the laggard and the Dow actually leading the charge. So the old world economy, a.k.a. usually the index that doesn't really have any AI exposure, so it's the laggard today taking the catbird seat out there. Let's see what else is going on out there in the market. Of course, post-Fed and a lot of green on the screen, you expect vol to come in, but we have been moving (laughs) pretty aggressively. People always forget this component to the vol equation. At the end of the day, movement is vol, whether it's upside or downside. Everyone thinks red is vol, green vol comes off. And in a traditional quiet market, you're kind of gently drifting. That is usually the case. But when you're actually moving a bit, like we are today again, vol manages to remain firm. That's pretty much where we are right now. We're also hanging out at some pretty low levels, at least for the last year or so out there from a vol perspective. Obviously, longer term, different story. But for right now, the frame of reference, the market we've been hanging at, the ball regime we've been hanging out here for some time. We're looking fairly low. 14 and a quarter when we kicked off the show today, down about a quarter of a point. So ball kind of treading water since our Monday show, which is kind of interesting going all the way through the Fed announcement, coming out the other side, hanging out almost unched. That's kind of intriguing. VIX looking a little bit frothier though, listeners. VIX 94 up about four points from where it was this time last week. 
VXX 2760 when we kicked off the show down almost a full point, about eight tenths of a point from where it was at this time last week. UBXY, it's coming up, listeners. It's coming up on the reverse split. So it's just kind of doing its own thing right now. 217 when we kicked off the show down a whopping 0.08. If you can't wait to really trade this thing again, then you don't have to wait much longer. Next week, listeners, the 23rd is when we will have that 10 for one reverse split, which Looking at it right now, maybe they want to go. Maybe they want to go twenty for one. <laughs> just, just putting that out there. Uh, SVIX twenty five forty, actually up six tenths of a point. You know, SVIX. That's our inverse friend out there. It seems like every time we get on the show, listeners, it's at a new, pretty much all time high. And it, yeah, it hit it again today. Twenty five seventy six. <laughs> new all time high this morning for SVIX. So wherever he is right now, the once in future Doctor Vix, pretty happy. He is, shall we say, overweighted in SVIX. So he's liking a new all-time high just about every day out there. Uh, Ubix, five and a half, down about three-tenths of a point. And VolQ at an 18, up a whopping quarter. So a lot of Vol treading water. Got a few movers out there. By the way, speaking of the once and future, Dr. Bix, he was on the extra credit we did for Vol Views last week. Obviously, no live show last week. And he mentioned picking up some June 15s going into the Fed. I asked him uh, yesterday, what he ended up doing with those, and he said he was working to get out of them post-Fed. So it sounds like he probably was able to maybe scratch them. We'll see. We'll find out. But no, obviously, if you watch the markets, you know there was no explosive vol upside to really capture post-Fed. So those kind of go in the way of the dodo. Uh, let's go out now to let's go let's go out to the Flowmaster hot seat out there in the lands of NYC. First off, Mr. Flowmaster, the last time we chatted with you, you were choked in apocalyptic dust and smoke sir first off are things better out there can you see again have you taken off the bane respirator since the last time we chatted uh yeah it cleared up i i you know everybody i know installed the the air quality app so it's a nice boost for the advertisers on that i guess uh it's been pretty nice it's uh we actually have a beautiful spring day today so i i guess as long as the current the wind currents stay the way they are it's not our problem we missed our chance for you to do a pretty sweet Bane impersonation. So I guess we'll have to wait for the next apocalyptic dust and smoke storm to come your way. And then we'll, then we'll get one of those. How's that sound? Can you do a good Bane impersonation? Uh, I'll work on it in the right. meantime. You got some time. You got some time. In the meantime, while you're working on your sweet, sweet Bane impersonation, what's catching your eye out there in these somewhat intriguing markets? Yeah, I mean, you know, everybody was kind of sitting on their hands into the Fed and, um, we were watching that that zero day straddle, you know, right into the announcement because, you know, the fun thing about zero day options is you don't really have to think about them in vol terms and skew and all that kind of stuff. You just look at it in price. So uh, we had a couple of, of side bets going on kind of where that straddle would be uh, right into the news. It pretty much hung out around thirty dollars. This is the SPX at the money right into the news. And then, you know, we got we definitely got a little bit of whipsaw uh, after the the announcement of a ha- of the pause. And we kind of finished almost flat. It was a big nothing after all that. That straddle went out worth about two bucks. So uh, but if anybody was short, it, you'd have to uh, stomach some some nauseating moves or just not look at the screens for a few hours. Um but I mean, otherwise, kind of people are busy today. It's gonna. It looks like it's the first day we're gonna see total volume around 51 million contracts, uh, which is the highest since the beginning of the month. So we kind of had a, a relatively mellow couple of weeks. Really, I think you know when you when everybody's fo- focused on a Fed announcement, you get a lot of people doing nothing because uh, they just don't want to be wrong. So. Uh, and, you know, we're kind of there, there's a lot of fun stuff in the um, odd block today to talk about. So I'm excited to get there. Yeah, it should be fun indeed. And that also means some poor bastard bought that straddle for 30 bucks. <laughs> Just Well, maybe he got out, though. You yeah, had a yes. chance there to get he, out. He had some chances. Out, you're right. It was a rough 45. trade. It was a rough trade either way. Either you're choking on that 30 bucks and trying like hell to get out of it, or you're short it and you're doing all right, but you're sweating bullets and, and popping tums <laughs> the entire way. So <laughs> a rough roller coaster ride, kind of in either direction on that one so there you go there's no free no free lunch at the end of the day you got to sweat it out listeners some of these fun trades out here well, let's keep on rolling mr rock lobster sir first off how many 30 dollars zero day straddles did you buy ahead of the fed and then uh, what else was catching your eye out there this week sir um i didn't know i did sell i had i bought some strangles earlier in the week and i know it's like i was pretty happy to sell the calls for like four four and a half bucks 
And then I just looked at where they would be. And then they're like, they would be like 14, 15 bucks. <laughs> so um, uh, the straddles kind of blew up um, to say the least. Um, uh, I, I think, you know, I'm not going to say we're, we're toppy because that sounds kind of dumb relative because all we do is go up. So, I mean, ultimately you got to say, Hey, the market's going up and you know, if they're going to buy, start buying the 500 calls and Nvidia and 600 calls. I mean, I don't think anybody cares about the prices of the, some of these stocks anymore. And it's just how long they don't care. Um, you know, the, uh, we've got, uh, kind of this, this historically is a quiet couple of weeks between now we got the, the June 19 holiday. We got the 4th of July. And so you got that like two weeks before the earnings even start coming out in July. And when some of this big tech, you know, is the market going to care about what their earnings are this quarter? And uh, like last quarter, they're like, okay, well, things don't look terrible. So we're going to take everything up big. So I think, uh, and until there is some kind of news to just juice stocks, I think we could certainly stay up here for a little while. And um, but again, don't know, um, don't know what's going on uh, from that point of view. But I I still think that people are still buying tech, um, and you know, VIX is can't kind of find that lower number. So, you know, historically, like a day on a Thursday, you've got the market up and vol and VIX really can't find new lows. That always kind of gives me a little bit of the willies, I have to say. You'd like to sort of see that vol settle in, but it hasn't quite done that today. So um, it, it would not surprise me to see like a lower spy by the end of the day, just because VIX, you're not getting any confirmation where like people letting the vol kind of come in. Um, so it's still. It, it gives me pause today. Let's just say that. We had a little pause going on. It gives me pause. Uh-oh. It gives the rock lobster pause. The rest of us know. I'm surprised. You're usually known to sling a strangle or two, but a little bit too rich for your blood this go around, sir? No, I had, I did have, like, I closed a lot of them mostly yesterday. Um, and then, of course, <laughs> everything took a whole nother leg up today. So I thought I was pretty happy. I still am, but... Um, I, I am looking at the pricing of, you know, like uh, Mark was just commenting, uh, Seabass, like the 40, the 40, 42 strangle on XSP was $2 and 15, half a percent for half a day. And then all tomorrow, uh, for tomorrow, it just doesn't feel like a lot of money, <laughs> um, to be quite honest, but, um, that's what we have right now. So I'm just, uh. I am, um, I am, I'm, it's all, it all has been noted. Let's put it that way. All right. Let's keep on rolling. See what else we've noted. By the way, I, I am, I am still getting greedy with those, with the, the remainder of my VIX puts. You know, I was talking with your buddy, the, the meatballer this week, and he thought it was time to, they had run their course, time to get out of them. And I, I couldn't say I disagreed with him, but I thought, you know what? I'm in for a penny now at this point, in for a pound. Let's see what happens on these bad boys. A post Fed, maybe we'll get this just ball drubbing. And uh, so far, we have not. Then the rock, then excuse me, this once in future Dr. Vix loading up on the other half. He buys the June 15 call. So we're both working different legs of that same straddle now. I guess we'll see who gets filled first. It'll be an intriguing race out there, listeners. But uh, maybe we'll, we'll have an update on Vol Views if I finally just, uh, I did bring myself down from, my, from my, some of my crazier, more outlandish offers. Let me just put it that way. Uh, speaking of outlandish, let's see if the markets and the volume right now it is outlandish, and the answer is, well, it's. I'd say it's it's pretty pretty strong. Let's put it that way. It kind of depends where you're looking yet again. Uh, VIX, for example, right now looking pretty strong. Six hundred and nine thousand contracts on the tape, listeners. So a pretty robust day. We were talking not too long ago, a couple hundred thousand contracts, maybe three hundred thousand by this time of the show. Uh, so that's pretty robust. We're certainly not north of a million like we have been recently this time of the show as well. So kind of a nice, happy middle ground. But looks like we're definitely going to hit that ADV, which has continued to move north since our last show. Listen, that ADV inching up all the way to 850,000 contracts out there. So a pretty, pretty robust day here for good old VIX. Well, let's keep on rolling. You know what data ends in Y, listeners. Spy. Going to put up some numbers, and that is the case again today. Spy right now 
6.3 million contracts on the tape, listeners. Uh, the ADB, 8.65 million. So Spy continues to just look more robust day after day out there. It doesn't really take much to send Spy, even on the quiet days, you know, when VIX has 100, 200,000. We usually see Spy uh, well north of 4 million by this time of the show. So Spy doesn't take much to, uh, to get it sailing north, at least from an overall volume perspective, listeners. Uh, let's keep on rolling. Let's get on out to the S. Now the S. Looking like a bit of a banger day out there today, listeners. The S, 2.16 million contracts on the tape. The ADB, 2.81. So the, the S, closing in on 3 million contracts a day, ADB. I mean, we're, we're talking the S within spitting distance now of the Qs from an ADB perspective. So <laughs> the S, not playing around. A good time to be in the zero-day game, let's just say. I'm looking right now, listeners, and... Ooh, you know what? I'm looking at the top 20 in SPX, and I actually see a whopping two contracts that are not expiring today. We have 36,000 of the 4,400 calls expiring tomorrow, also going up today. They're actually a number four and the most active in SPX today. So a lot of action there. Now, of course, that's only going out 24 hours, so it's not that far, but at least it's not expiring today. And we also have some D3500 puts. 21,000 of those going up today as well. So hard to believe there are contracts going up in the top 20 most active in SPX that are not expiring today, but today we have a whopping two. So uh, read into that what you will, listeners. But a pretty robust day for the S and the ADB showing that zero-day train not slowing down anytime soon. What's looking decent, maybe taking a bit of a breather today, are small caps IWM 549,000 contracts on the tape. The ADB continues to go up 1.13 million. So I thought... You know, the one million has been hanging out at, out at for a while was was pretty optimistic. And yet they've managed to hit or exceed that multiple times. And they managed to keep growing that ADV. So they are continuing to prove me wrong day after day out there in small cap land. And last but not least, we have the tech heavy NASDAQ, which, as I said, kind of play in the laggard role today. A rear role doesn't play that too often. So it may be a little bit not practiced <laughs> at that role out there, but intriguing stuff. Nonetheless, we've got two and a quarter million contracts on the tape for the queues. That is exactly 1 million contracts short of its ADB, which is three and a quarter out there. Let's get out to our single name. Most actives, you know, it's a pretty robust macro and index day. Is it a day that the single names have kind of been left by the wayside? And the answer is a resounding no listeners. There's paper for days out here, kind of what the Flowmaster was just saying. It seems like everyone's obviously sitting on their hands with the Fed, and we are kind of also post-May now, so we're kind of in that sell in May and go away. People are going out on their vacation, summertime. It's still early summer, but it's still summertime, so not exactly known to be seasonally the most active period out there. So maybe not surprising that uh, the, the first half of June has been kind of light on the volume front, but today... Making up for lost time. Cost you 365,000 contracts to break into the top 10. That's the most active we've seen in quite a while. And again, we've had days where that was like number two or three in our list. So that's already number 10. Uh, that gets us to SoFi. SoFi apparently finally, after just rallying like mad, getting all the way up to 10 and a quarter. Was that this week? Yeah, that was this week. That was on Wednesday, yesterday. Uh, now selling off down to 9.30. So selling off nearly a buck. In the last 24 hours or so, still a long way, six bucks off of its, well, five bucks now <laughs> off of its 52 week low of four and a quarter. Uh, but finally turning around here a little bit for SoFi. But you know what? Putting up some numbers today 365,000 contracts for number 10. Number nine, the Amazonians. The Amazonians all the way down number nine. You know, you got a pretty decent day when they're kicked all the way down to the number nine spot. Uh, we've got the Amazon actually selling off a little bit right now, too, off about a quarter, trading 126. 17 right now, but good for 372,000 contracts on the tape. Number eight, it's my old stomping grounds and uh, the mystery name for the Rock Lobster. He still wonders what this name is up to. Uh, this is Intel, not a name that we often bandy about these days in the most actives anymore, or even in the kind of tech mindshare leaders anymore. 3560 right now, pretty much unched today. Looks like it's had about a dollar twenty range on the day. So that's actually not nothing for Intel. Uh, but good for 375,000 contracts out there today. So 
clearly the game is afoot. Looks like they might be investing in ARM. So uh, maybe maybe some of that's also some patent issues going on with them as well. So some news in the offing there for Intel. Number seven, out to electric vehicles, listeners. It is NEO, 397,000 contracts on the tape. Uh, NEO popping hard today, though, 975, up about 75 cents or a little over 8%. My goodness, not bad. Uh, they have bounced off their 52 week low of seven bucks. Looks like that came back in May of this year. So not that long ago, less, about a month ago, less, a little less actually. And their 52 week high, 2443. So Neo hanging out somewhere in the middle of that range. Is this the upswing? Is this the moment? I guess we'll find out, listeners. Number six, this one, ever since it blew away earnings a couple of weeks ago, listen, this one has been just a frequent offender on our most actives and popping again today up another 65 cents trading 16 and a half dollars man my seven and a half put sale looks that i missed looks worse and worse all the time <laughs> this is palantir listeners four hundred and thirteen thousand contracts up another 65 cents today man they are carrying this thing looks like they want to take it to 20 out there and number five Good old Microsoft. By the way, Palantir, 413,000 contracts on the tape. Listeners, number five, Microsoft. Good old Softy. Man, they're popping this one hard today as well. $345 exactly up 765 or two and a third percent. My goodness, they're closing in on a $2.6 trillion valuation in market cap based off mostly off this latter stage of this AI rally. So my goodness. Microsoft off to the races, 572,000 contracts on the tape. Right behind it, not to be outdone, we have AMD number four, 582,000 contracts here today. AMD actually giving up the ghost a little bit today. A little over three bucks, about 310 to the dark side, or about two and a half percent, trading 124 and a quarter. Number two, yes, it's the fruit company listeners. Have you put in your pre order yet for your Apple uh, headset pro there? Don't call it an AR or VR headset. It is spatial computing. Have you put in your order for it? I'm not sure if you even can put an order. Are you intrigued? You're going to go deep on the Apple headset right now. Apple looking pretty green. So the market's happy. 185.10 up about a buck 15 right now. And looking pretty good here with 857,000 contests. That's the most paper we've seen for Apple in a while out there. Apple's been kind of sleepy of late. But you know, it's never sleepy, at least from a volume perspective. It's Tesla. Tesla off about a dime today, so not much going on. 256.70, at least right now. Looks like on the day, they've had well, they've had a decent range on the day. They had about a $10 range, about $10.50. Uh, they opened at 248.40, got up to 258.95. So they've had quite the range. Seems like they're settling down right now, kind of unched. But 1.7 million contracts already on the tape. So Tesla, as it is wont to do, putting up some numbers. Outside of that, listeners, as the Rock Lobster alluded to, we aren't really into the next leg of earnings season yet. That's not till next month. So we still have some of the dregs trickling in. We had Oracle on Monday. Uh, We had Leonard yesterday. We had Kroger today before the bell. They kind of screwed the pooch. No love there for Kroger today, as well as Adobe after the bell. So if you're intrigued by all things Premiere and Photoshop and all that fun, you got that popping off after the bell. Luckily for you folks, because we like you, we've got earnings move, earnings move results, earnings season, and earnings trades reports for you over there, theoptionsinsider.com. That's the place to go to learn more. If you did that, you'd see all the data popping off right now. Our season kind of winding down, hanging out. Seems like it's going to come in right around the average, listeners. We're hanging out right now at 95%. Our long-term average, and we've been running these since before the pandemic, so going back a bit now, our long-term average is about 96 So. It's hanging out pretty much right in line with expectations. Now, of course, if you looked at the numbers during the pandemic, we saw earnings volatility just went to die. Nobody cared. Massive underperformance cycle after cycle. Our long-term average then was much lower than it is right now. So it has come up quite a bit in the last few cycles. Doesn't seem like this cycle is going to be the one that moves us past the par level, the 100% level, but we shall see. Maybe the next cycle will be the one. That brings us into all the action. Speaking of all the action, it's time to dive into. I know the flow master, he's been champing at the old bit to get there. It is time to unleash the eye of Sauron, listeners, because it is time for the odd block.
It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. All right, everybody, welcome to the odd block, the portion of the show where we get weird, we get wild, we unleash the eye of Sauron. Remember, listeners, if you want to unleash the eye of Sauron for yourselves, only one place to go, SIBO.com, to unleash the trade alert beast and put the full power of the eye of Sauron in your hands. If you did so, you would find yourself looking at some of the names we're looking at right now today. Like, let's kick it off with everyone's favorite. I've talked about this one in a while, but uh, a decent year and actually a pretty good day today as well. This is Goodyear Tire and Rubber. Ticker symbol GT, trading about 14 and a quarter right now, up about a, up about a buck or nearly 8%. So pretty good day for Goodyear Tire. On the year, kind of a bit of ups and downs. A year ago, $11.82. Then they rallied it hard, got up to its high for the year of 1569 in August of last year. And then they came for it again, got down to about 10 bucks in September. And it kind of bounced around in the 10 to $12.5 range. Seems like until April. We're still trading 10 and a half bucks or so in April of this year. And then they shot it up over the last few months. They shot it up by May 15th. It was trading 1491. So threatening those new all time highs again. Then they kind of sold it off again by June 9th. Just last week, it was trading 1286 again. And then it's popped hard again, including another buck to the upside today. So an intriguing year, an intriguing month out there in Goodyear Tire. Mr. Flowmaster, sir, what did your. Your eye of the flow master find today in Goodyear Tire, sir. This is an interesting one. I, I mean, I kind of feel like, you know, once we got past this Fed uh, fear, I guess, you know, market's really actually very strong. And I think you're starting to kind of get some pockets of of pretty heavy speculation. And this looks like one of them. Uh, things kind of exploded about five minutes into the day. And we saw most of today's volume kind of print in the first hour uh, you know, and you're talking about 14,000 of the 14 calls, you know, that were cheap to start with, uh, you know, meaning like, you know, a few pennies and they got up to about 40 cents. So uh, I'm watching this one pretty closely just to figure out if this is one of these cases where we see a lot of heavy buying and then people are, are kind of getting out so that they don't really go home with anything or if there's a little bit more to it. I did see a similar spike in activity about a month ago, but that was very different. That was more like one big old spread. So, you know, seeing seeing how much vol is up in this name, you know, we're talking up almost 50 points. Um, you know, it might it's it's probably worth watching. I, I bought a little bit of stock when I saw it early and I still have some. Um, you know, it's not the only name that we're seeing some pretty heavy stuff, especially, you know, when when we see like Nikola and you know, all of the electric car companies, except weirdly Tesla, uh, seeing some pretty heavy up upward moves. You know, maybe it's just getting pulled into that that ecosystem. I mean, you don't need gas, but you still need tires to drive around in electric cars. Um, but it's it's a funky one. I mean, you know, the uh, the volume has slowed down. The stock is still pretty solid, though. You know, we're looking at basically call volume about ten times normal. Um, so uh, that's that's a good one to keep an eye on. Yeah, tires are extremely important with EVs. First off, the cars are ridiculously heavy, right? <laughs> so you need some pretty strong tires to hold these things. And people are also discovering, too, they start putting snow tires or other things on their EVs, and they, that, that range falls off a cliff, right? So the right tire for your EV becoming a big deal out there. Uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, sir, did these Goodyear tire trades, they come across your radar today as well, sir? And what do you think? They did actually, and I act because I hear there's some activist investors going on in this thing. So I I thought this was kind of again I look like an interesting trade. I actually did a little risk reversal in here. I sold the, I'm sorry, I bought some July 15 calls and I sold some August 18 or sorry August 13 puts because I this is the second time we've seen this paper actually in here. Um. So, yeah, it, it, I thought this has looked like some bullish flow in this. Look at you piggyback in here. You're, you're Mr. Strangle and Risk Reversal these days. That's kind of your, your new go-to. <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I didn't want to just straight pay for the calls. And, like, I'm, I'm looking for a little bit of credit <laughs> and some stuff. So Yeah, I'm surprised you um, bought the call initially. Usually you want to sell that put and wait for the So that must be a sign, listeners, that he thinks this thing is moving. He's willing to actually shell out for the call first and then find a way to finance it. 
That is that is correct, sir. I know the Rock Lobster. He'll sell that put, and he'll he'll wait till he really has to to buy that call. <laughs> so if he's doing it at the outset, listeners, intriguing. Pay notes. Uh, pay heed out there. Let's go out. Let's keep the ball rolling. Let's see what else the eye of Sauron, a.k.a. today, the eye of the Flowmaster, when he joins us on Thursday, has spied. Let's go out to another name we haven't talked about in a little bit. This is good old Vale, what we like to call on the show colloquially Vale, ticker symbol Vale, V A L E, <laughs> trading right now a 14 and a third. You know this one, listeners. It's the Brazilian metals and mining name out there. Trading about 14 and 35 today, up about a dime on the year. See, a year ago, it was trading 16 and a quarter. So, not the best of the years, but it got even worse. It got down to the low for the year of 11 and three quarters. That was back in September of last year. Uh, then it turned around from there. It had a pretty impressive resurgence by beginning of the year. January it was trading almost 20 bucks, 1930. So it went from about 11 and change to almost 20 bucks, so nearly doubling. And then <laughs> this chart looks like it just just flip of itself, and it came right back down again from January until about uh, May 31st. We got right back down again to 1268. So if you bought the stock in September and you held it through end of May. You did a whole lot of nothing. You got excited. You got excited early on in January, and you gave it all right back. Uh, but looks like they're trying to make it back again. Over the past month, it's up a, a couple of percent out there, so trying to rally it. It's gone from 1268 to where it is right now, 1435 or so out there. And Mr. Flowmaster, what did, you, what did your eye of the Flowmaster spot today in everyone's favorite Vale, a.k.a. Vale, sir? So, yeah, this was an interesting one, and, and it specifically stood out because we had put out a, a note about bullish flow yesterday when um, we saw a collar, kind of a ratio collar go up. Um, the um, the customer sold 10,000 of the July 13 puts and bought 18,000 of the July 15 calls. Uh, and they did that for um, – they did have a net debit on that. They sold 18 cents, and they paid 39 cents. Both of them opened. Um, and so we can see that because the open interest moved this morning and, you know, they're kind of the, you're, you know, like you said, this stock is kind of in the middle of its range. Um, you know, it's an iron company, right? So, uh, I don't, I don't know how much it's going to swing around, but, uh, today it's much more of a simple trade. It's the July 16, 17 call spread, 50,000 and bought for 12 and a half cents. That's a nice, and they're both open because there's not really any open interest in either leg. So, um, this is somebody kind of looking for a, a decent upside breakout. Now, 12 and a half cents is not. Uh, it's not a, a lot to pay for a call spread, but uh, 50,000 times. Um, you know, we're talking about uh, $62,000. And the payoff could be pretty huge if if we did get up there uh, and that spread became worth a buck. So, um, you know, I, I think that you're, you're continuing to see a decent amount of kind of reallocation, you know, sector, uh, you know, people, I think some people are getting out of the leaders that, that we've seen, right. The, the Apple, the, the meta, uh, the Tesla, I think that's why, you know, these names are a little bit quieter today and they're not going up, even though a lot of the kind of funkier tech names are going up. So, um, bullish one in there. I probably would, I, that's probably not a bad one just to own some stock. I don't know if I'd put on an option trade cause it doesn't really seem like it, 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 it makes any big moves, but you know, for a $14 stock, it probably I'd be, uh, I'd be an owner of a bit. Yeah. This person or these people here are happy, at least on the first leg of their trade and looking all right so far on the second leg, uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, sir, they're speaking your language here, kicking things off with a nice bullish risk reversal, which is looking pretty good right now. The July 13, 15. And then someone piling in today to the July 16, 17, a straight upside vertical. So I suppose, which one of these do you like better, sir? Uh, wasn't that the, that vertical, like 50,000 contracts? Pretty sizable, in, uh, yes. In uh, Valley, yeah, we saw that one too. We actually, and we saw paper in there um, last week, to be quite honest. So, um, so I'm looking up, 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 there's discussion. So, Yes, the Valley trade uh, did get our attention, and actually, they were they were buying calls in Valley last week. Uh, the stock sold off a little bit, but I'm assuming that it might perk up a little, uh, a little bit more. So, yes, this is this is the second time in a week where somebody has put up ridiculous paper in Valley. So, I'm assuming somebody wants some commodities, but I I didn't realize what a giant company. Valley was uh, 
how like how huge their sales are in commodities. Like they sell like they sell they sell forty four billion dollars a year of uh, platinum, gold, silver, cobalt, nickel, iron ore, copper, and everything. It's a huge company. Um, anyway, just a little sidelight there. Um, but um, yeah, their uh, their they their net income is fifteen billion dollars. Uh, it's more than Nvidia, and Nvidia is worth a trillion. And this little mining company is only worth sixty five billion. So there you go. There you go. Buy it. Buy it all right now, sir. We've all learned in the AI boom, there, there's no such thing as a PE anymore. These concepts are antiquated. <laughs> are they using AI to dig the precious metals, sir? In which case, I'm all in. Otherwise, exactly. Otherwise That's what I'm they out. need. Exactly. <laughs> they need the AI robots to dig the gold. Then, then this stock, 10x overnight. You watch. <laughs> Listeners, you like these? You like these? this vertical or this July risk reversal? Intriguing stuff out here. Speaking of intriguing, man, we're all over the place today which is kind of fun we've got names popping in we got different sectors popping in another name we haven't talked about in quite a while that is that is popping hard today some might say piping hot because it's a pizza domino's a pizza ticker symbol dpz just uh, exploding today 324 and a half this name is trading at right now up nearly 19 handles or a little over six percent just exploding north today listen it seems like a bunch of analysts are are upgrading it today on the strength of their carry out, carry out the pizza game. So, man, a Domino's. Domino's right now, if you don't follow Domino's, looks like hanging out uh, closer to their low than their high, but still a nice pop today. A 52 week low, 285, almost 286, and the high was 426. So, intriguing stuff. Let's look back and see when all that hit. Yeah, a year ago was when they were hanging out near those highs. Uh, they were 385 a year ago. They got up to their high for the year, 426 and change. That was in August. And then they sold off. Well, forget about it. You know, we rallied hard in August of last year and then sold off hard after that into October. Who knows if we have a repeat on our hands with rally hard now, but we shall see. Domino's it looks like it got down close to that low for the year. It didn't quite get there. It got down to 300, then it bounced. And then in November, got back up to about almost 390. And then hung out there for a while and fell off a cliff in February from 356 down to the low for the year of about 285. It's obviously some bad numbers back in February, but apparently that has changed now because now they're getting some good numbers because they've been hanging out in this kind of 285 to 300 range for the better part of the last few months until today where they're just uh, skyrocketing north. So apparently all that bad news they had in February, it is now gone, listeners. Mr. Flowmaster, what did your... What did your eye spot out there in Domino's a pizza today? Sir? Well, you know, I, I'm from New York, so I, I can't in good faith say I'm a big fan of Domino's pizza. But uh, this trade is a little interesting, and and it's kind of good that Trailer has the data that it has in it uh, to toot my own horn. But first, it looked like a buyer of the 300 calls, around 20 bucks, right in the first couple minutes of the day. And so I assume this was somebody – basically going, oh, crap, I'm getting creamed and covering a short. And there was open interest there, but I was able to back up and, and you know, because in trade you can go back in time and I can see when those contracts were opened and they were opened around eight bucks, but it was a buyer when they were opened and it was a customer buyer. And I can see that because of the SIBO data, it happened to trade on a SIBO exchange when it was opened. So today's actually looks like an exit to me. And I think somebody did, uh, did pretty well. And it also, I think paid a buck 20 dividend yesterday. So um, you know, this might be somebody that likes the stock that has some of the stock, maybe was waiting for the dividend to pass or something to, um, to get out of their position. But, uh, that's what it looks like to me. The other thing that was a little bit interesting and I'm trying to figure it out is the other pizza, uh, the symbol PZZA, which is Papa John's, that one's got heavy put volume today. So, um, maybe somebody's kind of putting on a, uh, an outperformance type of trade. Pizza Pierce um, trade, baby. I love it. Exactly. Like, you know, I, I don't know on that. If J Papa John's versus Domino's, I guess I'd probably prefer Papa John's, but um, could be an interesting uh, little pizza spread going on. <laughs> pizza spread. Uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, are you down with this pizza spread? And, and which leg are you buying? Which leg are you selling in the Papa John's versus Domino's pizza spread? sir? Which slice? <laughs> um i oh my gosh they are kind of a uh let's see here is that somebody i'm looking at this today oh 
So the DPC guy was the, they just made a bunch of money and now you're seeing some put buyers in Papa John's. I, I don't know. I think Domino's has come way off of their pandemic highs, as I recall. Weren't they like, it was like a super, it was super high property. They, they were right? 426. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Henry, did he, you were looking at these calls like, okay, they bought, oh, so they bought them and today they're selling at 20. So they made some big bucks on these calls. Yeah. They, they doubled their money. That's plus, plus some. Um, that's, that's pretty darn good. Uh, it's hard to it's hard to complain, but I don't know why Domino's all of a sudden up twenty bucks today. But um, and then you see put buyers and Papa John's. It, it's this kind of weird. Didn't Papa John's had all that bad press a while ago? So somehow Domino's has kind of skated through it. All I know is Domino's pizzas are a lot more expensive than they used to be. So um, oh, you don't get three for ten dollars anymore. Um, <laughs> I don't think so. With, I think with the get, breadsticks, I think you get one for fourteen now. And uh, as oh, and, man, uh, and so. I, I just, I mean, how can you be, I mean, somebody just double their money on the call. So they they got to be pretty thrilled. Thrilled indeed. We always love having the flow master fill us up. We got no Uncle Mike, so we could spend a little extra time here today in the old odd block. So how about we get out of here on a bit of a threefer, a bit of a threefer, listeners. First, let's go out to a name we haven't talked about in quite a while. Uh, this is that Jets ETF, ticker symbol Jets, J-E-T-S. It's been quite a while since we talked about this one. Uh, this one, the low for the year, 14 and three quarters, the high 21 and a quarter, trading close to that high right now, 20 and a half bucks, up about 15 cents today. Uh, looks like we got Mr. Flowmaster uh, finding himself a, a wee bit of puts out there, 21,000 puts going up out there. Not a lot of calls, but there is call love going on in the EB side today. In particular, we've got Nicola, first off, 8,300 of the October two calls going up in one print for 30 cents this morning paper. Lifting the offer on those when the stock was a whopping $1.48. Total of 16,000 of those going up today. And then not to be outdone, a name, I don't know if we've ever talked about this on the network before. This is Lordstown Motors, ticker symbol RIDE, R-I-D-E. Also getting some call love, but this is very near-dated paper. These are four calls expiring next week, the 23rd. Someone picking up 5,287 of those for 15 cents this morning when the stock was three and a half bucks, uh, coming in for a couple of thousand more. So a total of 7,000 of those on the day and a total of 16,000 of the Nikola two calls having traded on the day. So Mr. Flowmaster, what are your thoughts on these jet puts? And then what are your thoughts, if any, on these, uh, this EV upside call Palooza today? Uh, so, so, so Jets was yesterday uh, and it was a um, uh, pretty heavy flow in two uh, in two lines, it was um, the July 20 puts they were being bought to open and the SEP 19 puts, uh, like 15,000 a piece uh, in um, in a bunch of sweeps. So it was kind of somebody sweeping up everything they could. Uh, you know, we've had such a quick run up. My guess is this might just be somebody, you know, who's been long airlines and and kind of has made some money in the last couple of weeks and is willing to put a little little portion of it just into kind of a simple put hedge. Uh, you know, the ETF is still much lower than it was pre COVID. You know, these airlines have been really beaten up. They have not bounced back like, uh, like the tech names. So, um, I think that's what that is, but it's, it's worth, I, I'm kind of leaning towards some sort of a pullback as well. Now you mentioned ride, which I, I'm like, wait, I think I own some of that. And I pulled it up in my platform and I'm long it and, and guess what my base uh. is. I'm not going to tell you when I bought it, but just guess what I paid for that stock, which is now around four dollars. I'm gonna say you paid two dollars and fifty cents. No, I paid hundred and eighty six bucks for oh, it Jesus. <laughs> in April of twenty twenty one. I don't so, I don't mean to laugh, but wow. But hey, I made back twenty five percent today. You're, you're golden. So you're on the way. Now I'm only down ninety seven point eight percent. Um, maybe I'll start selling some calls against it. Uh, the you know yeah, pasted it into our into our uh, our group chat. Uh, a bunch of the uh, EV names today are uh, are seeing you know pretty big upside moves. I think you know, like I said, I, I feel like people there's a little bit of a wealth effect. People kind of have, have calmed down. You know they don't they don't. I think an, another interest rate hike might have hurt us yesterday. It didn't happen. So you know, things they were kind of back to the complacent kind of vibe. And so people are playing around. And, uh, you know, some of these cheap dollar stocks, whether it's AI or electric vehicles, um, you know, it's easy to get people excited about that. And I think that's what we're seeing in, um, 
you know, in this mix, we got Nikola, we got Neo, um, you know, and like I said, what's funny is Tesla's not participating today. So um, I think you know, there was a lot of press about how the, the run up over the last, you know, month or two really was eight or nine stocks. And that's those dragged the averages up. And that was actually making some people pretty nervous. Um, you know, I, and maybe people have listened. They stopped buying the super cap names and they're playing around in the smaller cap names looking for the rest of the market to catch up. All the cheapy EVs getting some love out there. Are you playing in any of these listeners? They have been beaten up a little bit out there. See, we don't just talk about our winners here on the show, listeners. The Flowmaster telling you where he got in originally in Ride. Good stuff here. Speaking of things being told to us, let's see what you guys have on your brain right now. A little bit of the old mail block. It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for The Mail Block. All right, everybody, let's get out there, see what you guys have on the brain. Let's also see what our live chat has in store for us today. Remember, you can join the live chat, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro listeners. <laughs> uh, we have Nichols saying, Domino's pizza sucks. The lava cakes are decent, though. Yeah, I can probably get behind that. I know a few people who like their lava cakes. He says, the stock looking nice as well. Yeah, they're, they're looking pretty hot. Some might say piping hot today. He also says he feels your pain, Henry on the ride so i'm guessing he bought some a little bit higher as well you are not alone so i don't know if you bought it at your level but <laughs> you're not alone in the in the lordstown motors pain there our chat commiserates with you then we have option god oh he's got a question for you option god says how do i get that free trial of the eye of sauron again mr flowmaster so tell him how we can go about it sir uh just go to sivo.com slash rma which is risk and market analytics and go down to the bottom and there's a form you can send in a note say i heard about trade alert on the options insider and i want to try it out and we will we'll hook you up with a, a month free trial real-time data uh and and some help to make sure that it shows you all the juicy stuff that it shows us a little glowing button at the bottom of the SIBO website with a glowing eye of sauron just says get your eye of sauron trial here. <laughs> and then say put next to parentheses not tm no trademark <laughs> Just click that button. I got a feeling our, our folks would be all over that. Uh, speaking of all over things, our question of the week, listeners. Uh, we asked you quite simply, VIX continues to drop while rates continue to go mostly up. Uh, we, we wrote this before the Fed, so we weren't sure if they were going to raise or not. It's challenging to generate income using options while the rewards for cash are substantial, which raises the question, are you still selling covered calls in this environment? Gave you four choices. Yes, I'm just selling a little closer to the at the money. Or yes, I am, I'm a, but I'm okay with a little bit less income right now. Or no, it's just too much risk for me, or I'm just in cash, I'm out of this market. Or no, there's not enough income for me at all. Uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, sir, what is your vote? What do you think our audience is voting for? Um, wow, that's a good one. Um, we try. We aim to please, sir. Yeah, um, let's see here. So, like again, this is... Okay, what are they saying? I'm going to guess the audience is saying they're selling closer to the money. Um, for me, right now, I would say there's just not enough in it to do it. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, I could see that. Mr. Flowmaster, sir, where do you fall on our poll, and where do you think our audience has fallen, sir? Uh, I still think selling calls, selling cover calls is great. Uh, you know what? I mean, if you're comfortable kind of limiting your upside a little bit, you're comfortable with with uh, you know, the gains that you've made on a stock, then, then I love that strategy. I think you have to have the discipline not to do it on stocks that are really beaten up where you're desperate to try to make back a little bit of money. Maybe that's why I didn't do it in uh, Lordstown Motors. You're waiting for that uh, par strike to come back up before you start, <laughs> start writing those calls again out there. Let's see, our audience, uh, they're on the no side right now. They agree with the Rock Lobster. They say there's too much risk right now or they're in cash 40% right now then we have a tie for all the rest around 20 percent each for no not enough income or yes i'm okay with less income or yes just sell closer to at the money so the other three kind of a tie looks like uh the the close to majority of you right now are closing in on half of you saying there's too much risk right now or you're in cash uh we, we have we have option god in our chat saying he voted no too much risk as well so i can certainly see that i'm not going to hold that against anybody out there well, let's see. We are coming up, coming up against it, listeners. So let's keep on rolling and go around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for 
Around the Block. All right, everybody, welcome to Around the Block, the portion of the show where we tell you what we're keeping an eye on until our next episode, which won't be on Monday next week. Listen, we're all going to be like the Flowmaster. Our next appearance not going to be till next Thursday on the old OB show because we are all off for the holiday on Monday. So, Mr. Flowmaster, we'll start with you. What are you keeping an eye on until your next appearance next Thursday? Uh, um, I'm just watching, uh, you know, watching kind of the, the beginning of the summer. I think it's going to be kind of a, a quiet and sideways summer, realistically. I think we'll get some good moves. Uh, you know, if, if we get pullbacks, I'll try to buy. And, you know, if, if we kind of continue to hit some highs, I, I'll be I'll be trickling out some calls or, you know, maybe even unloading some stock. But I think it's going to be kind of one of those summers where it'll be some good opportunities. I'm looking at these 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 little that's a that's a pretty interesting dynamic, you know, and, and we see it in kind of times of, of speculative, um, not a frenzy so much, but. Uh, you know, there's no fear out there right now. So, um, you know, I'm going to be looking for kind of the a quick in and out on some of the speculative pops and um, otherwise keeping things a little bit smaller than usual. And looking for that power strike again in Lorestown. We're all cheering for you there, Mr. Flowman. Okay. Sounds like our chat is too. because it's pain. Mr. Rocklops, the same question for you. We were all waiting for the Fed this week. Kind of a bit of a nothing burger, but a, also a bit of a rally burger, I guess, as well. So if you're a bull, you're liking it. Uh, Mr. Flowmaster, or Mr. Rock Lobster, what are you keeping an eye on until our next episode for the OB next Thursdays? I mean, yeah. Look, I mean, you, you're you're looking at SPY as 441. Um, there's kind of no end to the rally. We're actually rallying with just NVIDIA is not up. Microsoft really, or Microsoft is kind of powering up today. But the rest of the market is starting to, you know, wake up a little bit. So I'm saying... <laughs> the only thing I say is I like to see uh vol drop a little bit, but we've been the rubber band has been stretched so far. I think it's gonna be hard for that to happen. Um so it is not gonna surprise me. We are 92 points away from 4,500. That's all I'm gonna say. It's it looks like a million miles away, but um the back of my head is like I think the market wants to get there before the fourth of July at this point because the Fed isn't gonna raise. You know, we got a budget deal. Uh, I'm, you know, <laughs> on we go. So that's that's what I'm looking for. On we go, indeed, listeners. On to our next program on the network coming up in a little bit for all you live folks hangouts, and we'll be back in a little bit. I'll be joined by the folks from uh, Prosper Trading Academy on Twifo to break down all the action going on in the world of all things futures options you want to check it out for yourselves uh, join us of course in a little bit on the live or after the fact wherever you're getting this fine program if you're listening to the network it'll be there waiting for you after this let's go back around the horn let's start with the flowingest of masters mr flow master sir we talked about it before give them an update where should folks go if they want to check out all the stuff you got cooking in the land of sea uh com slash rma uh you can also follow us on twitter uh we're just option alert so i'm trying to up the up the content there although i'll tell you the elon's uh, api changes are making our life a little difficult so. <laughs> a lot of a lot of his changes on twitter making a lot of people's lives difficult and stay tuned for that glowing eye of sauron button coming to the bottom of the SIBO homepage soon right mr flowmaster they can expect that next week absolutely absolutely imagine imagine the fun people will have that in the meantime you know where to go listeners at SIBO or should say at SIBO on Twitter at option alert on Twitter and of course SIBO.com the place to go to begin your journey to the dark side of all things trailer and Mr. Rock Lobster where should they go if they want to begin their journey to the dark side of the pit yeah go to optionpit.com uh call up Ted 888-301 Ted or Andrew our customer care team uh, and if you hear this show, you get a uh, 10% off anything or go on over to money map press to weekly profit cycles. There you go. Check him out. It's going to do it for us on this show back in a little bit with all things, futures options related, and then back again tomorrow, noon central 1 PM Eastern for all things vol related vol views. And then back again for all you pro folks after that for options oddities, and then back again, not on Monday, but again, next Thursday for the next episode of the old OB. Stay safe out there, everybody.
The Option Block is brought to you by SIBO. When it comes to trading volatility, trust SIBO, the creator of the VIX Index. For in-depth and relevant information, SIBO's tools and services gives you up-to-date trade insights, analysis, and positions of VIX options and futures. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cboe.com com slash vix today to learn more you're listening to the options insider radio network the home of the options podcast for more quality options programs visit the options or search for options insider radio network in your podcast provider of choice listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the itunes and google play stores Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash The Options Insider, or via questions at TheOptionsInsider.com.